good evening. Um, firstly, thank you very much to the event for asking me to come here and talk uh, again about Thai and the movement of change. Um, I'm really hugely passionate about Thai, hopefully reason, for reasons which will become clear uh, as I talk for hopefully around 15 minutes. I, I know to sort of run, you know, go a bit too long, but I'll try my best not to. Um, but it, yeah, suffice to say that um, my career has taken an amazing shift uh, thanks to my experience with Thai. And um, before I go any further, I just want to say, I think Jonathan, your experience was just absolutely fantastic. I sat there wishing I'd thought of getting a director on before, before I went out and, and a fantastic fundraising thing. And, I think excellent for anyone else planning a Thai placement to, to bear in mind. Um, so, somewhat dauntingly, uh, Philippa uh, advertised that I would be talking about the importance of new perspectives uh, about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, uh, following your heart and vision uh, to get exactly, I think it said, uh, what you want out of your career and your agency. So, I shall try and do that uh, and to explain briefly why I have any right, if at all, uh, to do that. Um, I'm going to just really briefly talk about my Thai experience so you understand a little bit about the time um, I had sort of echoes of some of the things about. Um, some of the lessons I learned um, in, in terms of anyone thinking about doing this, things that really stood out for me, in particular, sort of, I certainly didn't realise it was happening at the time, but set me in good stead uh, for coming back to London and launching Leah Burnett Change, which I'll talk about a bit more, but is the not-for-profit and behavioural change specialist division of the Leah Burnett Group, which was founded directly as a result of my experience with Thai. So um, I went to Thai a long time ago. I went on the Thai experience a long time ago. That was there, uh, in March 2011. Um, and I worked, uh, uh, went to Hisipi, like Jonathan and Sarah Hugo, and Sarah Hugo in a minute. Um, Hisipi, as you can see, can be a very, very beautiful city. It's, a, it's in the northeast of Brazil. As you've also already seen, it's a terribly, terribly poor uh, region. Um, and I similarly worked with an organisation um, working with street children. Um, my organisation is called CPP, which uh, stands for Comunidade dos Pequenos Profetos, which means the community of the little prophets. Um, it's an organising uh, organisation set up by one man uh, with the excellent name of Demetrius Demetrio. Um, <laughs> he's uh, an absolute like you meet someone like that once in your life, and the energy that you absorb from them, and his absolute passion for making every day hugely count and doing good, is is truly infectious. And, and you know, I think if all I'd done was meet him, uh, that would have that would have changed uh, my perspectives and my view on how to how to live life. But uh, there's many many more amazing things on the trip. Um, CPP works in the heart of Hasifi, as you've heard a little bit. Um, you know, street children in Hasifi suffer all the things that street children all over the world do. Um, they're also particularly prone to being addicted to glue. They're lucky, and almost always, uh, well, also to crack cocaine. Um, the other thing that uh, is hugely prolific in Hasifi is that they are there are um, death squadrons uh, in Hasifi, and um, these street children often steal and rob to uh, support their drug habit uh, and uh, local uh, shopkeepers will hire the death squadrons to go and eliminate uh, individuals so they their lives are very very cheap um, and they are, are very easily uh, wiped out without anyone even knowing about it. Um, CPP is, uh, in terms of new perspectives, I spent one a night on the streets, um, this was a picture of the night, I think it was loads up, um, but lots of the similar pictures that Jonathan kind of showed children uh, sniffing glue, a woman who was 30 and looked like she was about 58, and um, that was an incredibly harrowing experience, it just, it, even the mattress was just so grimy and mosquito bites and it didn't even, you know, have to react to it, really, really small things that we all take for granted, and they're having to live like that all the time, it's unsurprisingly it turned to drugs. So that was kind of a really harrowing experience, and I was lucky it was one night, that's a shame to say about harrowing is when you had to experience it one night. Um, and this was probably one of the best days of my life, I've had to twice, sorry, two great days, um, which was going to the farm that CPP um, have, um, and that's where they take people with the sort of most entrenched drug addictions and also those with, um, you know, the death squadrons after them to get them 40 kilometres out of Hasifi and to try and keep them safe. Um, and absolutely fantastic kids and very like Jonathan, you get chatting to them and they're very, very normal. Their lives weren't made, meant to take a sort of meander off in this <coughs> direction. They have exactly the same dreams um, as you and I. Um, I kept the Thai placement. I worked with a local advertising agency, CPP, uh, and with um, Demetrius, Demetrius and his team at um, CPP. 
Uh, and we developed a campaign which was Dreams for Everyone. Um, and like Jonathan, like everyone, you have 30 days and amount of money. So I was quite proud of my figure before I found out how much Jonathan was. Um, but you have to make that figure work really, really hard and you have to decide quite early on in the process what you think you can achieve uh, in a month. Um, we came up with this insight and campaign. Um, we decided CPP was very, very little known in his CV. We did some research and found out almost no one knew about it. Lots of people would have loved to have known about it and been able to help street children. Generally, they just have to walk past the street because they felt so disempowered. Um, so we held an event on, I think, two days before I left, um, and we got quite a few um, local politicians and uh, media, including one chap who went on to do a one-hour documentary, which we were really, really pleased about. Um, we had uh, an animated film that we managed to make in the time, um, which told the story of dreams being for everyone. Um, and we had a variety of posters and um, documents, DM materials that the CPP could continue to live. We also had a gallery. These are all kind of kids from um, the various uh, CPP properties, even the farm or the, the building that they had in town to look after kids in the morning. Um, and each of those is, is, is a story about what they dreamt of, and they're all very, very simple things like having a family. Um, uh, you know, having a wife, uh, or perhaps being a professional footballer, but you know, everything dreams of that, so that seems fair enough. Um, in terms of that, I'm rattling through, so I do apologise, but I think some of you may have heard it before and uh, able to go to it more time. Um, in terms of lessons learned, I think the key thing to say is I didn't necessarily realise I was learning all these at the time, but when they asked me to do this talk and thinking about how we're going to change and launch it, it's become clear to me. This one I'm probably aware of, which is, um, it's amazing what you will do if you really believe that you can't fail or if you have confidence in yourself. I almost always um, don't think these things are going to turn out well, end up sort of beating myself up, <coughs> hating myself for the fact that I've signed up to something. I felt exactly like that before I went some time, I felt exactly like that before I threw myself out of pain for Alzheimer's research. Um, kind of wondering why you've done it, not thinking you're going to be able to do it, thinking you're going to kind of fall off the last hurdle. Um, and the more often I sort of push myself uh, to do something I don't think I can do, the more you realise actually it's only in doing those things that, that you kind of prove to yourself that you can actually achieve. So I think time's fantastic for that because I don't think anyone can look you in the face and tell you um, that before they go to a country where you know, in lots of places you have to learn a language that you've never spoken before, it's the first time you're going to have to practice business in a language you've never spoken before, you're going to live in a in a, a, an area, a room, a family you've never met before, that you feel all together like you're going to be able to, at the end of it, put together a great campaign and, and sort of do a credit to your agency and for all the people that are invested <coughs> in you. But it's a fantastic thing to do, and everyone does an amazing job. I think it's a great lesson to learn that we can all do a lot more than we might originally believe. Um, that's very linked to kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, I found this image. I don't know about anyone else, but normally when I'm outside my comfort zone, it doesn't feel like magic at the time. <laughs> it's normally looking back on it and realising how much you did and kind of going, cool, that's, you know, brilliant. Um, but I did spend a lot of the time in Hasifi just, you know, flying on the seat of your pants. 30 days goes incredibly quickly. You're pulling in all the favours that you can. And um, this is something that I found happens more and more when you come back to uh, London and ask your ex co if you can launch a new agency. <laughs> so that was a good learning point. Um, another really important thing that has stood uh, Liam at Change of Thinking great stead is learning that you can do an awful lot with very little time and very little money. Um, it's obviously lovely if you've got lots of time and lots of money, um, but for charities, you know, I know we're always telling our paying part, you know, sort of big money promise. Um, that you, know, you can't have policy and no time and no money, and that's quite right, and all made that rule apply. Um, but you know, sometimes charities come to us and they have to get, you know, they can make a huge difference if you can help them communicate something um, in a short amount of time and for a, a little amount of budget. Um, and that was something definitely that I learned in the CV and we apply and we had change. But generally speaking, that's only when you've got a fantastic team. So I think, you know. Again, Jonathan showed how uh, getting the right partners really, really makes a difference. Um, I wouldn't have done anything in Hasif if it wasn't for the amazing people at Arcos who um, helped from the advertising agency point of view, and if it wasn't for the passion of CPP. Um, and the internet change wouldn't exist, and we wouldn't have any of the campaigns we do if it wasn't for several hundred people, a number of people here, um, you know, who've helped, helped make that happen. So, talking about the internet change and how it happened off the back of, of my trip to. Um, for his CV, came back to London, 
these are our offices. They're very nice, um, but they're clearly not quite as colourful as, as, as some of the experiences that, that one has in kind of the CV. Um, the great thing about new perspectives is if you have some time outside London, you, you know, you, you, you kind of look back, think about your career, think about all sorts of things, time to kind of reflect, I guess. And I came back and I had a real passion. I, Philip was incredibly inspiring. And we talked about it a lot. She does an exit interview. Um, and, and she talks a lot about what you would do with all the feelings that you had coming back from time and how to make something else of it. And not, not let it just be, you know, and that would be fine if it was a great experience and it gave you lots of kind of, um, you know, new skills and confidences and so on and so forth. That's, that's fine, but I don't want to do more with it. Um, from a personal kind of perspective, I, I remembered <laughs> Shouldn't have been that hard. That I'd come to Leo to work on DFT um, and, and had done so for, for a good year and a half before the COI disbanded and worked with some fantastic campaigns, even managed to use some of my psychology degree, understanding how children and teenagers' brains differ from ours to, to do the campaigns. Um, but when they left, um, they started working on a um, for, for crop production yard to use the the name of the company, but a, a grubby online retailer. Um, and uh, the sort of business model isn't exactly the most ethical out there. And I sort of suddenly realised that a lot of the things that were really important to me and that I really cared about and I really wanted, and one of the reasons I moved to Leo the next um, to work on DFT was that I wanted to do something uh, good with my life. And, and I firmly believed, having worked on a number of campaigns through my career, um, that made a difference to society. That, as uh, Tim said earlier, that communications, we have a fantastic tool and ability and skill set that can change uh, the world. And I think we've seen a couple of amazing campaigns just now that, that prove that hugely. Um, and, you know, I haven't gone to be able to work on a grubby retailer. Um, and the reason the ladder's there is because I think I was realised I was busy climbing the ladder and it was up entirely the wrong building. Um, and I probably want to do something different about it if I wanted to enjoy my job. Um, and, you know, I think we should be allowed to enjoy our jobs. I think we should feel passionate about the things we do. And I think going on time really reminded me of that. So we decided to have um, <coughs> a couple of numerous conversations with my friend and strategic partner, Kit Elton. Um, and we decided, actually, why, why didn't we talk to the Leavenet Exco about setting up a, a, a division within the group that, that specifically um, did behavioural change communications and, and, and non profit uh, communications. Um, the uh, one of the slogans, the slogan at the top of my blog when I went to Hasiki was "Be the change that you want to see in the world." Um, and so we went to the Exco with a proposal for a division of the group called Leo Burnett Change. Um, we knew they wouldn't buy into it unless there were good business reasons. Um, and Tim listed a number of them earlier in terms of um, the world is changing. We can't be seen to be. Uh, uncaring, you know, everyone now has to fill in CS, um, corporate social responsibility reports for their agencies, and increasingly our clients care about this and want point of, points of view for, from, from us on it. Two of our clients, McDonald's and Kellogg's, do a fantastic job on this, and we can't, you know, increasingly not have a point of view on it. Um, we also talked about the fact that we had, uh, you know, a wealth of knowledge um, and skill set from the years that we've worked on COI within the building that was you know, being wasted at best and getting very frustrated um, at worst. Um, we've got a number of big clients uh, at Leo Burnett that we don't have a complete plethora of different small accounts. Um, and some of the accounts, you know, can be quite creatively challenging in a way that um, smaller um, charitable accounts are, are not necessarily. Um, and we wanted to give, uh, bring new business into the, uh, into the building that would give people um, a reason to jump out of bed in the morning and hopefully stay, so we made the point for retention as well. Um, and we wanted to bring in <coughs> accounts that win awards, that obviously um, it gets, it gets various departments very excited, contributed to our CSR record um, and made a difference to society. So in August 2011, we launched the Urbanet Change as part of the Leo Burnett group. Um, so we've got the kind of Leo Burnett, which is the above the line agency, our experiential follow social media change, the youth not for profit and behavioural change specialist, and Atelier at the other end uh, doing the luxury. Um, at, today, at, on this day, we work with the RNLI, Amnesty International, Meningitis Now, uh, Media for Development, Business in the Community, Multiple Sclerosis Society, Society and Plan UK. Um, I'm going to play a short film 
um, that shows you a selection of the work that we've done over the last three years, um, which includes our entry for the white pencil, uh, Peace One Day. We didn't win because we didn't go off and collect it for a year of an extra cargo. Um, <laughs> and a couple of the other clients, and then I'm going to go into a bit more detail about the RNLI and um, BITC, they're two of our most recent campaigns, and um, I'm two we're incredibly proud of. So hopefully, Um, it's rolling out nationally this year. 
um, having seen um, very good um, research uh, at the end of last year which showed that it had very high awareness figures and also people were uh, beginning to report um, that they would change their behaviour in line with it. Um, another campaign we're very proud of is our work for the VITC um, around the issue of reducing reoffending through employment. 70% um, of the well, of the UK have um, a criminal record and they are 50% of them reoffend. They're obviously much, much less likely to do that um, if they have um, if they're given a chance at employment, but they're extremely unlikely to be given a chance at employment. Um, so the VITC has a big campaign um, to try and encourage companies to put people back to work. The first step of this is to ban the box, they literally just take the box off. Um, application form so that um, uh, ex offenders can come in and have a conversation about themselves and you know their skill set um, before being rejected as a parent. We created um, the first ever unskippable ad, uh, which was technologically uh, very technical, um, and it ran as a pre roll um, in front of um, uh, various uh, films on, on the Guardian website and so on and so forth. Um, and you couldn't skip the chap as he was telling you about his life. But every time you tried to skip it, he got more and more distressed um, until he asked you to go, uh, you know, to give a <coughs> chance next time and you would try to go to the website. Um, we're very proud. One of the things we're most measured on by the company is obviously, um, you know, we're starting to bring in revenue and that's great, but we're hugely measured on the awards that we bring in because a lot of the work we do um, is pro bono. And the two campaigns I just talked about have been. Um, nominated and won uh, in uh, each of these awards, and we're very much looking forward to Thursday's DNAD with fingers crossed. Um, <coughs> some kind of parting uh, comments based on my experience um, and launching launching Labour Net Change and everything that I learned from Ty is never doubt this in a group of people. Amazing things can be achieved by fantastic and small groups. Um, if you are feeling frustrated in your career <laughs> and you um, are wanting something to change, then try being brave, try try jumping. Um, I always think this is important, everyone always talks about doing something that you love. I think going on time helped me remember what I loved, what I cared about, and gave me the time to think about where my career was heading and how to kind of address any of the areas that I wasn't quite so happy about. Um, and then it gave me time to think about a strategy for presenting a case to my company. Uh, to I relied heavily on Calvin and Hobbes because I'm a massive fan. Um, to presenting a case to my company so that we could uh, launch a that change. And finally, kind of have fun and be brave every day. Um, you know, in the words of Calvin, if you haven't got, um, if your knees aren't green by the end of the day, you ought to seriously re-examine your life. Um, I think my experience on Thai and um, being able to launch a that change has given me a fantastic roller coaster of a ride um, and I've learned a huge amount from it. I'm looking forward to doing more and more um, and it definitely won't happen without time. So thank you very much for listening.